at one hurricane. Tropical Storm Laura is still basically south of Cuba. At this point, I'm going to put both of them into a forecast track, and then I'll really kind of go hour by hour with, with each different storm. So let's first kind of focus in on Laura. This will be the storm that we need to watch for primary threats, and this may be a concern as we head into about Wednesday and Thursday of this week. Let me show you. So as Laura starts to interact with Cuba, so it's going to continue to move over land, we don't have a really good handle. Models don't have a really good handle. The exact track after it moves into the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico. So this timeline, tomorrow morning at this time, when Laura moves into the open waters of the Gulf, this is when we're expecting some rapid intensification. Now notice Marco at the same time, hugging the coastline of Louisiana. It's expected to weaken by late Tuesday night into Wednesday, and that's when it's expected to move here locally. So the impacts from Marco will be minimal, if any. We're talking about a, a scattered showers to a few thunderstorms. It's lore that we have to really watch closely. So again, with a land interaction, models are struggling exactly the path that it's going to take once it moves into the Gulf. If it stays completely south of Cuba and doesn't have much land interaction, the track may shift a lot more westward. If it really interacts with Cuba, throughout the day to day and it starts to shear just a little bit apart, it'll take a little bit more time to gain that strength and organization. And no matter what, before it makes landfall, it is expected to climb at least to a cat one, cat two. If it has more time in the open waters of the Gulf, which the GFS is suggesting this morning, it could even intensify to a major hurricane, which would be a category three or higher. So again, Laura, we really have to watch extremely closely. This is when uh, that model guidance, especially after today, once it moves into the open waters of the Gulf, it'll, it, it will probably be a lot more precise, especially by early tomorrow morning. Now, what I can tell you right now, again, it's about 805 at this point, maximum sustained winds at 65 miles per hour. What's interesting, it's moving fast, west-northwest around 21 miles per hour. Once it moves away from Cuba, the, the, uh, how fast it's moving will start to slow down. That's going to play a really big role on just how intense, how quickly Tropical Storm Laura starts to energize itself. So I'll put this into the official track. So we'll just talk about Laura with this from the National Hurricane Center. Again, this is the latest update as of, uh, it's 8.06 now, the 7 a.m. update this Monday morning. So as it moves across Cuba tomorrow morning, late morning into to midday, that's when it'll go from a tropical storm into a category one hurricane. This is all depending on that land interaction with Cuba. If it stays south, we could see a cat one a little bit uh, earlier. It'll probably energize itself a little bit faster. If it has some, uh, if it stays over Cuba a little bit longer, then it's going to take a little bit of time to gain that strength and organization. It continues on that west northwest track. And again, with that land interaction, it could either travel further west or it could travel further east. So that's why this cone of uncertainty, we are still in it just ever so slightly, but that's why we really have to keep our guard up. I'll zoom in a little bit closer here. Let's look at that timeline for uh, landfall. This is Wednesday, one o'clock, and then here is into Thursday morning. So it's sometime late Wednesday night into Thursday morning. We're looking at the potential landfall. Right now, the National Hurricane Center has it just east of the Texas-Louisiana border, but this could easily shift. I mean, plus or minus 100 miles, uh, we're, we're going to continue to monitor closely, and that will have huge impacts on us. So if it remains east, of course, those impacts will be minimal. Of course, if this track shifts any further west, that will change up what we are going to experience here a lot on Wednesday and Thursday. So the next 24 hours with that forecast over Cuba is pretty critical to the forecast here locally for Wednesday and Thursday. Let's talk about Marco. It's continuing to weaken as expected. Maximum state winds now at 50 miles per hour, still at a tropical storm status. It's expected to hug right along the coastline for Louisiana. Now expecting to weaken as we head into late Tuesday, overnight into Wednesday, post-tropical. So here locally, we'll just get some rain out of Marco, but it will be enough to saturate the grounds before tropical storm Laura. What's also interesting is the timing between Marco and Laura as well. Marco may take just a little bit of the energy out. So as far as the waters go, we'll, we'll have to see how that plays. I mean, this forecast is extremely tricky. Now, as of 8.08 this Monday morning, all the wraparound moisture 
around Marco, already starting to impact uh, the Florida panhandle here and across portions of the Gulf Coast into Louisiana and even here uh, locally as well. Let me zoom in. We've already seen some shower and thunderstorm activity this morning. If you live south of I-10 or especially towards the Gulf Freeway, including Galveston and Brazoria County along the coast, did you get some rain this morning? Did you hear a little crack of that thunder? We did have a few thunderstorms, but it's beautiful out there. Partly cloudy skies, temperatures in the 70s. At this point, we are looking at a, a slight rain chance today and tomorrow. Temperatures, though, still warm. 30 to a 40 percent chance and then let's talk Wednesday and Thursday. Notice the tropical rain with the question mark. These are the two days that we have to monitor for uh, the potential of those strong winds, really heavy downpours and that's all dependent upon Laura and uh, we will gain uh, a lot more certainty as far as the organization and the track especially as it moves into those op that open water of the Gulf of Mexico tomorrow. So that's a tough forecast, and I know it's it's tough. I don't know about you. I have had many of sleepless nights this past weekend, of course, looking at this forecast. I'll show you one last time of the position and the, and the track right now. I'll bring it back to the beginning, just in case you're joining us. I believe we are still live on Facebook. <laughs> and uh, I'll show you again, so in case you missed it at the very beginning. But here's Marco. Here's Laura. And both, you, you can see how it's just not well defined just yet, but again, this is expected to take that northerly track over Cuba. If it remains south, it's going to be a, a pretty different scenario as far as that track is concerned. I'll show you what we're expecting now. This is from the National Hurricane Center. I'm going to stop this timeline tomorrow morning. So you can see throughout the day today, Marco hugs the Louisiana coastline. It still continues to send the rain chance here. That's why I have this at about a 30% chance. And then Laura, of course, expected to remain a tropical storm throughout the day today. As we get into tomorrow, it crosses over Cuba, or if the track stays south, that's going to be a really big change in the track that it's expected to take. Uh, once it moves into the open waters of the Gulf, watch how quickly it goes from a tropical storm status to a Cat 1 to maybe a Cat 2 or Cat 3 before making landfall. So that rapid intensification will happen probably midday Tuesday all throughout the day into Wednesday. So a lot to monitor, a lot to watch. Of course, if any changes happen, we will let you know first thing here, either on our social media pages or, of course, on TV as well. All right, stay safe, everyone, and stay prepared.